what's going to be open. Good morning. Day two. Riding day again. Yeah, we're gonna go and um, we're gonna go to Needles, right? Yeah, Needles Needle, Highway. Needles Highway. Yeah. Evidently, it's supposed to be worse than uh, Maui. The 600 turns. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll so see. We, we had to stop here at the Hill City Cafe this morning for breakfast, you know, and get yeah. some get some ballast for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> my belly with my. <laughs> My backbone was rubbing a hole in my belly, so I had to get something to eat. So, we took care of that. We're ready to go ride now. Mm -hmm. So, enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye. sad but it ended we've come full circle we're back here at the full throttle yep. turning the bikes in yep. it was fun 344 miles in 24 hours well, I wouldn't say 24 well in 12 12 hours at yeah least. yeah had it all day yes well noon yesterday you guys want a water Got some in here if you want water. I'm gonna get a water. Going to the water? I'm gonna have a beer. It's we have a driver. Really We're gonna go to the saloon and get a beer now that we can have one, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna. 
<clears throat> I'm gonna go have a beverage so yeah we had a, a joyful time it was great they uh, if you if you ever want to come to Sturgis on and off then um, come see them they rent right next door to uh, right next door to the buffalo chip so just come up and rent one mm -hmm. yeah. it's worth it they've got ultra classics they got heritages road kings and it was only like $229 for a 24-hour rental. It wasn't bad at all. Nope. And then you just have your insurance on top of that, which we did. And um, as it stands right now, $25 every hour after your uh, turn-in time. Turn-in time. So yeah, it was fun. It now was. we got to run. Speaking of time, it's time for a beer. <laughs> this bud's for you. Get up here! Yeah, I'm just checking the security out, making sure everything's fine. Making sure there's nothing behind the bush. Hey everybody. Today's video is sponsored by Advanced Electric and Solar. That's a plug for my son. Our son. Sh sh not, uh, not even shameless plug for our son's solar business oh. <laughs> in San Diego. <laughs> but today, actually, if you can tell from this beautiful scenery behind us, we're boondocking right at the edge of Badlands National Park. We're only about four miles, four and a half miles south of the town of Wall, South Dakota. Out here camped out right on the rim. It's, been, it's pretty cool. Keeping an eye on the dog. That's why I keep looking away. <laughs> So yeah, cool Cool as in it's a neat place to be, not cool as in temperature wise, it's been pretty hot. But, <laughs> but thankful the wind is blowing and it kind of keeps things semi cool. That's one of the things that we read in the reviews was the wind just howled up here and a lot of people complained about it, but it has been what's been making this completely bearable without air conditioning. Yeah. I can have air conditioning, just start the Jenny, but I ain't started that thing in six months. Right, except just to run it. Just to run it. But not to use it. Yep. So we're going to take off today, drive through Badlands National Park, and then maybe head into Wall. Lou! And the famous Wall Drug, and maybe get an ice cream or something. And we'll show you where uh, the jackalope was born. She still doesn't believe me. You can see the glue marks on them. <sighs> it's not glue. <laughs> All right, off we go. Well, this is our first stop, and when you're entering the park from Wall, it's 24 miles across the park to the visitor center. And there's some dirt roads that come off the paved road. We're just going to stay on the paved road, I think, and pull in and get some photos and work our way over to the visitor center. Yeah, okay. We'll do it like that. What do you think? That was hot. <laughs> we can't take Lulu out on the trails. They don't. This is one of those national parks. They don't allow dogs on the trails, just in the improved areas. So she can come out in the parking lot, but not out on the trails, which is a bummer. Yeah, but she, I've seen some dogs out on the trails, too. Yeah, we wonder how much they really enforce that. I'm talking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> One of the most interesting things right here is the coloration of these hills, how they go from like yellow to this pinkish purple to white. It's really neat to see the like the coloring of the different layers. Got dog duty! <laughs> Thank you. 
It is hot out here, almost 100 degrees. And uh, even though we can have Lulu out in some of these spots, we're just either not taking her or Bub is carrying her because we don't want her to burn her little paws. It's blistering. It is beautiful though. The stark landscape is really cool. Really, really fun. Well, while we're here, we're going to stop and check out. This is the National Minuteman Missile Historical Site. <laughs> I don't think they mean what you think they mean by Minuteman. What? what? <laughs> it's actually a, a monument to the nuclear missile, the Minuteman missile. So <laughs> I'm going to go up and see if they let leashed pets inside or not. And if they don't, Bub is going to babysit the dog. And if they do, I'm going to come back and get them and we'll all go in. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Bye. The Minuteman Missile National Historic Site protects two of the remaining nuclear launch facilities in South Dakota. At one time, from 1963 through the early 1990s, a thousand nuclear missiles were hidden throughout the Great Plains. While these missiles possess a terrifying ability to cause destruction, their main purpose was to serve as a deterrent to other aggressive nations that might consider launching their own nuclear weapons against us. This historic site reminds visitors of the conflicts of the Cold War and just how close we came to total destruction. That was interesting. They had some neat displays, especially if you're into that, the history of the nuclear arms race and the Cold War and that type of thing. Um, it's an interesting little exhibit. It's not very big. It's free to go in. You can walk through it in five to ten minutes unless you stop and read every display. Plus they have a little movie that plays. Um, so yeah, kind of a cool little stop. It's right on I-90. So um, if you happen to be passing by and you like that kind of thing, Hop in for a minute. All right, any of you who have been through this area or who have driven I-90 have undoubtedly heard about Wall Drug. And when you're on I-90 for about 75 miles in either direction, there's constantly signs for it. And it's a uh, that was a big tourist trap here, but it's fun. So we're gonna go check it out and we're gonna get some ice cream and get a picture of a jackalope and... Yeah, those rare jackalope that don't exist, but boy, they got them all over the place, so <laughs> they do. go figure. And uh, But our first order of business is we have a souvenir for a friend. We're gonna stop in at the post office here and mail it. <clears throat> so let's go check it out. Onward. They're real. All right, now that that tour is done, we can focus on finding some ice cream. Maybe they'll even have some for the dog. Hey, y'all remember the movie Big with Tom Hanks? Check it out, it's old tar.
back at the campground. We we had to get out of there. It was too busy. It was just way too crowded. But uh, their ice cream was really good. It was really rich. And um, cool little town. Like I said, total tourist trap, but kind of fun. And then we stopped at Sleepy Hollow RV Park before we left town and got water to bring back. This has become another use for our smart car. Let me show you. You puts the water in the back. Get the dog. Hey, come here. What are you eating? Did I mention we got her her own little ice cream in town? She seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> of course, it's 100 degrees. Who wouldn't enjoy it today? <laughs> Well, it's been a week. How's everybody doing? Yep, and of course, we had no wind until we turned the camera on. Yeah. So hopefully our dead cat's doing the job. <laughs> yep. But it's time for us to pick up and go today. Yes, we've been here a week. And uh, I can say for myself, it felt like a week. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready to go. I was ready to go, I think, two or three days ago. But uh, that's all right. I mean, we're not in a hurry. And it's been enjoyable. It's been pleasant here. Yeah, it, uh, other than the wind, I think we've had uh, two days, two evenings that the wind didn't blow for a couple hours. Other than that, it's just, it's been blowing and blowing and blowing. A couple of nights pretty hard, but other than that, about this, you know, maybe a five mile an hour wind. We did have a couple nights ago, a storm came in and we went from the forecast being sunny with no chance of rain to all of a sudden severe thunderstorm warnings and 95% chance of rain yep, yep. and here it came and uh, they said 55 mile an hour gusts and uh, we've been in worse but it rocked us a little <laughs> it did it was but it was good it was okay yeah and um, some good thunder and lightning out of it which was nice and then uh, other than that, we haven't minded the wind because it's been 100 degrees every day. So just go in the house, start sweating and come back out. And you got yourself an automatic <laughs> air, conditioner. air conditioning. <laughs> and that's where today we're headed a uh, couple hours further east. We're heading out towards the Missouri River and uh, Corps of Engineers campground. So, and there's, it's been cool at 100 degrees. There's a heat wave that's due to come in starting tomorrow. It's supposed to be as high as 106. So uh, we're running for some 50 amp electric yeah. for that heat wave because um, the air conditioner running on the generator just isn't cutting it with the heat. No, we need a, a bigger, bigger one. Yeah. I mean, we got one big enough that'll run it, but with this heat, you're not going to keep... That's just not touching it. You know, you're not going to keep it cool with one running. So, yeah. onward to electrical. But it's been, we've had a good time here. We have met some really nice people. Just 
just hanging out outside in the evenings or in the mornings and people out walking around and they stop and say hi and we have enjoyed everybody we have met. Mm -hmm. We have. Um, we have noticed that, I don't know what time is it now? It's got to be about 11. It's 11.20 and everybody's bailing out. Now about 4 o'clock everybody starts coming in. Mm -hmm. So it, it, during the day it's pretty quiet here. At night it gets a little busy. People want to just try and get up onto this bluff to look over the edge. Well we have, um, yeah we've noticed that it seems to be like a one night stopover for yep. most people. Yep. And um, a few people have stayed longer but most come and go when one, one night. We've seen the best of people and we've seen the worst of people since we've been here. And we're not talking, you know, funky dressed Walmart worst of people. We're just talking about people without... Poor camping etiquette. Poor camping etiquette, yes. You know, the, the people that, like, um, there's a staked off area that's posted with no camping. And we've seen people just barge right around the barricades and go camp out there. You know, it's like, that's the kind of stuff that'll get these places taken away from us eventually. Yeah. You know? Or the person that wants to run their two generators until three o'clock in the morning, but they park right under your bedroom window. Yeah. Seen that. <laughs> yeah, so. So, you know, just things where people just aren't thinking about the consideration of others. Or there was uh, one night there was a schoolie, they had some people come and visit, and they had the doors of their Jeep open and music blast until after midnight. So, you know, you have those, but. For the most part, everybody out here has been great. They have. So many really nice, wonderful people. Yep. Like everywhere we go, everybody's nice. Yeah. But yeah, we're getting ready to, we just got to load the smart car. We're a little close to the bluff. He was going to do it yesterday, but it was a little too close for comfort. So we mm -hmm. thought, yeah, okay, we'll wait till we move the rig. And uh, so we're going to load the smart car and get headed down the road. We got to make a detour and hit Walmart on the way to, um, the campground and we've also got to stop at an RV park and dump the tanks so we better get going it's getting late we will catch you down the road bye